Hello, thank you so much Matt for inviting me to speak to you about prophecy and I look forward to meeting some of you on Zoom for the Q&A session on the 13th. So, my name is Charlotte and I'm the Head of Prayer and Venue Marketing at St Mary's London. I've been on the t staff team for about four years and a member of the church for nearly seven years. Prophecy is something I have been on quite a journey with. So, ten years ago I would have told you God is someone I believed in but I didn't necessarily want anything to do with him. And as for prophecy, well, that simply didn't happen anymore. I imagine God has a little chuckle to himself when he sees the girl who didn't believe in prophecy operating in the prophetic now. God speaks to me in a number of ways and for all sorts of people. He's shown me things that I could not possibly have known by myself. And it is one of the most beautiful privileges of my life to partner with God and share the things I think he may be saying. It is incredible the way a word from God has the ability to transform a situation or create this moment of connection between a person and God who loves them so much. And the wonderful news is, if God can give that gift to me, someone who flat out denied he could, then he can and he wants to give the gift of prophecy to you too. As John Wimber, a charismatic leader, used to say, everyone gets to play. So let's dive in. What is prophecy? Well, prophecy is an expression of what we believe God is saying about a situation or to someone. This is normally about the future, but it can be about the present too. There are also words of knowledge, which is where God will reveal a fact to us of which we have no prior knowledge through the Holy Spirit. My friend James, who will be joining us for the Q&A, is really gifted in this area. So prophecy is one of the many gifts God gives us, which we read about in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. So let's read that together now. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone it's the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous power. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. And to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. The Holy Spirit gives us different gifts including prophecy for the common good. These gifts are not just for us but for the benefit of the people around us. So let's for skip forward a few chapters to 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1 where Paul writes follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the spirit especially prophecy. In fact he's so keen to make his point that he ends the chapter with the same thing verse 39 my brothers and sisters be eager to prophesy we are to crave the gift of prophecy like a succulent roast dinner when you haven't eaten or a cold beer on a hot day. We have the spirit living within us now and he wants to guide us and help us get better at discerning what God is saying. Our calling is to follow the voice of God in our lives as Jesus did. We'll all be coming from different places. Some of you listening to this may be very experienced in prophecy and others will be completely new to it and still learning to hear God's voice. It doesn't matter. Prophecy is for all of us and the Bible is quite clear about this. Paul then goes on to say how he wants us to all prophesy because the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging and comfort. Who doesn't want to be able to strengthen, encourage and comfort others? We really need this in today's world, especially right now in the middle of this world health crisis. Prophecy is so wonderful because it is a sign God is with us. I once led a group at Hillsong Church teaching people to hear God's voice. In the group were two massive bikers all dressed in leather. And if I'm honest, I began to feel a bit intimidated. And I started to worry, what if God doesn't show up? But as I asked God what he wanted to say to one of them, I felt God start to share with me experiences this guy had had and how they'd made him feel. But actually that God saw him completely differently and was heartbroken by the things that had happened.
And as I shared this with the man, um, what I thought God might be saying, this huge, tough looking guy began to cry because in that moment he felt so known and so loved by God, his loving heavenly father. He was so aware of God's presence with him and his unconditional love for him. And crying is something I've seen time and time again. It is one of our knee jerk reactions to the Holy Spirit's presence. I have countless stories of this where God has used me simply because I've shown up, despite the fact that I did not feel qualified enough, good enough or even worthy. I remember uh, once praying for a woman who God had showed me suffered with horrible depression and self-harming as a young person, which she later confirmed. And he showed me this not because he wanted to expose her. And I think this is often something that we can really worry about with prophecy. God will never expose you. Prophecy is all about love. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 says, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but I don't have love, I am nothing. And the gifts of the spirit are meaningless if they're not exercised in love. God showed me her pain because he wanted her to know how much he loved her and how he was present with her in those dark places of her past. But more than that, he showed me because he wanted to help heal the pain. And through sharing that word, an incredible emotional healing took place. The first thing she said to me afterwards was, are you an angel or something? Now, I am no angel. I get things wrong. I mess up as much as the next person. But I like the picture because it demonstrates what we do when we prophesy. It is like we speak with God in his throne room and get to deliver this personal message. Um, and with this in mind, it's quite helpful for you to imagine yourself as a spiritual post worker. So your job is to deliver the mail, but not check the contents. So in a minute, we're going to move into how to hear God's voice. But first, I want to establish um, a few protocols for how we share what we think God is saying well. So firstly, we run it through the A, B, Cs. So advice, Bible, common sense. So if you're new to the Get, get advice from a more experienced Christian. In the story of Samuel in the Old Testament, Eli the older, wiser priest guides him through hearing God's voice. I love how God just keeps calling Samuel, Samuel, until eventually Samuel cottons on to the fact it is God he's hearing through Eli's help. Samuel eventually becomes one of the great Old Testament prophets. Secondly, does it line up with the Bible? If what you think God is saying contradicts what the Bible says, you've probably got it wrong. Thirdly, use your common sense. Ask the question, is this for me or for somebody else? Sometimes we can get so excited that we've actually heard God speak that we just feel this compulsion to share it. Uh, if it's for you, write it in your journal. Be excited God is speaking to you, but you don't need to share it. And if you feel it is for others, then share it. Have the courage to go for the gifts in public because it sets such a great example. If you know you really should be sharing a prophetic word, but you feel nervous, go for it, because that is faith. There is absolutely no certainty in this area. We don't know if it is God, but we believe it may be. Err on the side of courage, not caution. As long as what you're sharing is loving, strengthening, encouraging or comforting. Lastly, be prepared to be wrong. There is no shame for going for it and missing it if you follow the above. Everything we share, we offer. I use phrases like, I think God might be saying, or I feel like God is showing me, or does such and such mean anything to you? When I decided I was going to eagerly go after the gift of prophecy, I was often wrong more than I was right. But that was okay because that was part of learning. And one of the particular exercises I did was ask God to tell me how many persons a sibling had and then ask him for their names. And the amount of times at church I'd walk up to somebody like, hey, I'm trying to grow in hearing God's voice. Do you mind if I ask you something? And then I would ask if they had two siblings and they'd be like, no. Um, but guess what? Like the earth didn't open up and swallow me. It was fine. And we just both moved on with the conversation. Honestly, being wrong is not as bad as you think it's going to be. Alternatively, on the times that I was right, it was a real moment of encouragement for both of us. Um, and I think if I asked the people I practice on now, if they remember me asking them, I don't think they'd even remember. I think we tend to remember the things that spoke to us over the things that didn't. So go for it. In the Bible, it is so clear how much God loves faith. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K and God loves it when he takes a risk. 
He celebrates us for going for it in faith and not our performance. There is no heavenly graft just tracking our successes and failures. So let's go for it in love. Not exercising prophecy in love is a potential disaster. But this is not a reason to avoid the gifts of the Spirit. The only way the kingdom of God is going to be advanced is if we exercise the spiritual gifts. The answer to incorrect use is not disuse, but correct use. Um, if you suffered through a misuse of prophecy, I'm really sorry. Take time to get prayer and receive healing, but then get straight back on the gift horse and don't look it in the mouth. You are each God's chosen son and daughter and he wants to use you. So how do we learn to hear God's voice? In Matthew 4, Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And then in the Lord's Prayer, he tells us to ask God for our daily bread. God knows without our spiritual bread, we will starve. And the spiritual bread is hearing God's voice. In John 10, 27, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. As followers of Jesus, we are designed to his voice but we have to learn to listen out for it. In a crowded room, I can always hear my husband's voice despite the hubbub. I know his voice because unsurprisingly, I know my husband pretty well, and I've spent a lot of time discovering more about who he is as a person as I hang out with him. One of my favorite verses in the Bible speaks of how Moses would talk face to face with God as a friend. The closeness of Moses' relationship with God is one of the keys to how he was able to hear God's voice so clearly. This is why it is so important to have space in our days to connect with God. This can be a really challenging habit to build, but when we pray and ask God to teach us to do this, he will help us. And I promise you, this is life transforming, but in like a slow and steady kind of way. I now really feel it if I miss reading my Bible in the morning. We can also do things that will help us connect. So firstly, schedule that time you want to spend with God in your diary, much like you would when you arrange to meet a friend for coffee. Work within your existing routine. So if you're a morning person, put it first thing before you get up. Likewise, if you're a night owl, schedule it some time before you go to bed. Or maybe you have a quiet spot at lunchtime. Choose a time of the day that works for you and then put it in your diary and stick to it. Start small. Five minutes even 15, and then just build it up over time. And now you've got a plan of when, work out where you want to have your quiet time. Repetition and visual cues are two of the most helpful things you can do for yourself when establishing a habit. It may also help to set alarms on your phone to remind you. And as with all habits, it's good to have a small treat plan for you to reward yourself with after you successfully carried out the habit. Okay, so how do we recognise God's voice? In 1 Kings 19, the presence of the Lord passes in front of Elijah. And this is such an important couple of verses because when we're not used to hearing God's voice, I think we tend to imagine this big, booming old man voice or maybe something a bit more dramatic like the rushing wings and tongues of fire dancing around on people's heads, like the story of Pentecost and Acts. But actually, it doesn't really look like that at all most of the time. So let's read it together. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake quake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. God's voice is often a gentle whisper. And my own experience, it often sounds very much like me. And if I wasn't paying attention, I could easily miss it. So one of the first keys to hearing God's voice is to just slow yourself down. Make time to be still. Maybe sit in silence for a minute or two and do nothing but focus on your breathing. Prime yourself to listen. We are each unique creations and God has intentionally made us that way. So it's no surprise that each of us will hear God's voice differently. So here are a few of the ways God speaks. So number one, through the Bible. Pretty much every Christian I know will have had an experience of God speaking to them this way. Um, and often multiple times. So the amount of times I've opened my Bible and it's spoken exactly into my situation. Uh, when I tried to move to Manchester to do a degree in material engineering, 
Um, on the first night I discovered I had this horrific bed bug infestation. I mean, there were literally thousands of these blood sucking nightmares crawling up and down the walls. And I basically zipped myself into the sleeping bag and I opened my Bible and I read an Old Testament passage about this awful tribe of people who used to burn their children alive as sacrifices being completely wiped out. And I felt like God was saying he was going to completely wipe out the bed bugs. Anyway, next day I moved out of the house and not a single one came with me, which any pest removal person will tell you is an absolute miracle. In a similar way, God may speak through hymns, worship songs and sermons. You know that strange feeling where the speaker be could be talking directly to you as if there was no one else in the room? And then secondly, pictures. Uh, from one other's experience, I'd say this is the second most common way God speaks. For some people, they can literally see an image appear in front of them, like an image on a TV screen. But for the majority of us, uh, myself included, it's more like this impression in our mind's eye. And it's often fleeting and we could miss it if we were not focused on God. So with pictures, it's first good to ask God to show you a picture. But don't stop there. When you see something, ask God what it means. Ask God to tell you about the details. Why is it those particular colours? What does it mean? And then wait for him to answer. It might be 30 seconds or a few minutes. But in my experience, if you will just wait and listen, God will almost always speak. It does get time, take time to get used to hear what he is saying, though. And when God speaks to us, it can be so easy to dismiss it, dismiss it as just us. And sometimes it will be. But often the only way we'll know it is God is if we share it and the person responds to it. One of the cues I sometimes get that it is God is that my heart will start to race or I'll become aware of the Holy Spirit's presence. But just as often, nothing happens. And time and time again, I've shared something I felt God was saying and felt absolutely nothing, but it's really spoken to someone. If you want to grow in hearing God's voice, a big part of it is having the courage to share in love. Matthew 13 says, whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. When we use what God has given us, more will be given to us. When I share a word, I'll often have had the most fleeting of impressions, but I find that as I open my mouth and start to speak, God fills it and he'll give me more details. As I step out in faith, God gives me more revelation. The other note with pictures is you don't always need to interpret them. Don't try and overinterpret. A couple of years ago, I was trying to make a tough decision and I said to God, if you want me to do this thing, I want you to I want you to get someone to tell me they see a rabbit. But if there are no rabbits, I'll assume it's because this is not your best for me right now. And then shortly after this, a woman comes up to me and says, I don't know what this means, but I see a rabbit. Uh, she took a risk and it was profoundly meaningful to me. Thirdly, dreams and visions. I haven't got uh, time to speak about these in much detail. So if you want to know more, I really recommend reading Dreams and Vis Visions by Liz Evans and also reading books in the Bible like Daniel. God has always spoken to his people in Dreams and Visions and they are all over the Bible, from Joseph's dreams about grain and stars in the Old Testament to Peter seeing a sheet of animals descending from heaven in the New Testament. Dreams are often full of symbols. Sometimes when you when God speaks, you just know deep inside, somehow you physically sense something in your body. Um, I think when you physically sense something, it's only because God is talking about something he wants to heal in someone around you. For example, my lower back might start to hurt and it might turn out that someone around me has lower back pain. Um, and I'll often say that and pray for them if it's true. And the rare ones are things like audible voices, uh, Samuel or Jesus when he's been baptised or being visited by angels like Mary at the birth of Jesus or even being taken up into heaven like Isaiah in the Bible. Uh, if you've been doing this for a while or a more prophetic person, you may find that you've experienced God speaking to you in many of these ways. Sometimes we also go through periods where God seems to become quiet. And I want to encourage you that God hasn't gone anywhere. This can happen for a couple of reasons. Firstly, we can drift away from God and this can happen so slowly we don't notice. Or it might be because we're disappointed. Maybe something we've been praying for for a long time hasn't happened. Or circumstances have arisen in our lives that leave us feeling let down. This can be really hard, but process these things in prayer with God and close friends. 
Don't let anything take you out and take time to receive God's healing. God loves you and he is for you. He's not abandoned you. The second reason this can happen in my experience is because God is trying to grow you. I like to imagine this a bit like a parent standing a few paces in front of a toddler um, with open arms as they're learning to walk. Sometimes it isn't that God isn't speaking, but that he is speaking to us in a new way that we don't recognise yet because he wants to grow us. Job says, for God does speak, now one way and now another. Ask God how he is speaking to you right now. So I hope this has been a helpful taste into prophecy and hearing God's voice for yourself. I know I've covered a lot, um, so here is a quick summary. One. Prophecy is for everyone. We are each God's beloved and chosen sons and daughters and he wants to use us. Two, prophecy is to strengthen, encourage and comfort. Three, love, love, love. Every prophetic word should be given through the filter of love. If it isn't loving, strengthening, encouraging and comforting, it probably isn't God. And if you want to get better at hearing God's voice for others, one of the best questions you can ask God is, how can I reveal your love to the person in front of me? Ask God to break your heart for them. Four, before you give a word, make sure it's loving, lines up with the Bible and use your common sense. Five, it's the owner of the prophetic word's job to deliver the word like a spiritual post worker. It is then the job of the receiver to weigh the word. Do you think it's God speaking to you? Does it make sense? If it doesn't, then just forget it or save it for later. It can be good to seek a mentor's advice if you're unsure. Six, when you're learning to hear God's voice, slow down. Make space in your life to connect with God through the Bible, prayer and worship every day. As you spend more time with God, you will begin to hear his voice more clearly. Every Christian who walks powerfully in the gifts of the Spirit has put in this time behind the scenes. Seven, God speaks in lots of different ways, through the Bible, worship songs, sermons, things we see, pictures, dreams, visions, physical sensations, audible voices, angelic visitations. And then eight, as it says in Corinthians 1.16, be courageous, be strong, do everything in love. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K and God loves it when we take the courage to step out in faith. Partner with God and his kingdom is one of the most exciting things you can ever do. Let's get to know God's voice and become sources of strength, encouragement and comfort to those around us. Let's use the gift of prophecy to partner with God and see his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven.